Hi there, it's Jason here. We've got a slightly different approach this week. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, you'll know that I normally record them in the car. This week I'm going to do them in my office in front of my screen and I've got a little PowerPoint uh, slide as well just to sort of talk you through the points I'm making. So if you do prefer this format, please let me know in the comments below. As you know, my other format is me talking to you while I'm driving in my car. So anyway, today I'm going to talk about a slightly controversial topic and it's why you should never use your accountant as the registered office for your limited company. <clears throat> now, as I say, I've got a few bullet points here. Before I start, if you like the video, please give it a like down below. Um, even better, if you could subscribe to my channel, I'm releasing videos all the time um, to give accountancy, bookkeeping and tax advice for you. And uh, if you want to contact me, I'm Jason Blackman and the practice is called Just Pure and there's a link in the description to, uh, to contact me. So, it's going to be a, a fairly uh, brief video, but I just want to get the points across about why you should never use your accountant as the registered office for your limited company. So, I've got five points here that I want to make in this video. And the first one is you should always retain some control, however small. So what do I mean by that? So lots of, uh, lots of clients of accountants use their accountant as their registered office. And as you probably know, that means any correspondence from HMRC or Companies House um, will go to the registered office. And if your accountant is a registered office, they'll go to your accountant. And that's fine because your accountant is obviously the one in control of your accounts and tax returns. They'll be the one that's filing them. But I do often hear a lot of horror stories about accountants. Now, some will ignore it. Um, I've had stories of accountants that disappear off the face of the earth. Um, some accountants that just don't contact the client to get things done. You know, there's lots and lots of reasons why the accountant may not contact you or may not tell you that you've got deadlines looming, for example. And these deadlines are pretty important, as I'll uh, explain as the video goes on. So I feel that although the client um, will want the accountant to do everything, they should retain some control. So the client, I think, should always know what their deadlines are, when their accounts are due with Companies House, when their tax returns are due with HMRC, just to give them that little bit of knowledge, armed with a little bit of knowledge, so that they know when their deadline dates are and they can stop any sort of fines or penalties happening. And if, if you don't see any of your correspondence um, from Companies House or HMRC, then you may not know when these deadlines are, so it makes it very, very difficult. Now, I've got a little case study here. I've just said it can cost you in fines and penalties, and that's absolutely true, because I've got an absolutely true story. A client that I took on, um, now she had her previous accountant as her registered office when I took her over. And to cut a long story short, the accountant had kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. She was emailing him, trying to contact him. She couldn't get in touch with him. And as such, her accounts at Company's House were overdue. So she's been trying to get hold of him to chase him for the for the you know to get the work done, but he's not been answering her emails. Um, so I took her over, I got her accounts with Companies House up to date, and I said to her, What about your corporation tax returns? Are they up to date? And she said, Well, what are they then? So again, to cut a long story short, we found out that corporation tax returns hadn't been done for about three or four years. So she had about four to five thousand pounds, I would say, in fines and penalties to pay when we eventually got her up to date. And this is all because the accountant never told her that these were due and the reminders were going to the registered office address, which was the accountant. So I believe that if she would have been getting the reminders from Companies House and HMRC, she would have had that little bit of control and she could have probably taken more action to get the corporation tax returns done. I think she could have probably hired another accountant if she'd known there was so much outstanding. But she didn't because she had no clue. And I just think that's a dangerous situation for a client to be in. So that's another reason why if she'd had a registered office address where she was in control of what she received, then I believe she could have taken action a bit quicker and reduced the amount of uh, the fines and penalties that she received. Now, I don't know how much your accountant would charge you for being uh, your registered office. Um, I certainly know of one accountant who charges about £1,200 a year for uh, for. Um, being a client's registered office, and that's quite expensive in my opinion. And I certainly know of um, certain services you can get that just deal with uh, with the, uh, being a company's registered office. So there's websites out there. There's, for example, an address you can get in London. 
um, they'll act as your registered office and what they'll do is when you get correspondence from HMRC or company's house they'll actually scan it and email it across to you so I think that's a brilliant service you're in total control then of your deadlines and even though it is your accountant's job to get everything filed it's um, important that you know the deadlines and so I think if you can go with the service to be honest you probably get 30 40 50 pounds per year for that service and it's really worth searching them out so they'll just uh, be your registered office address and I'll just send you correspondence from HMRC and company's house which is fine because a lot of stuff you get addressed to your registered office is just rubbish so HMRC and company's house stuff is what you really need and they will make sure it's scanned and emailed to you for about £50 a year so I think that may even be a cheaper option than going with your accountant and the accountant may not take responsibility as was as is uh, detailed in my case study earlier accountant um, you know made a, f made a few apologies but didn't really take responsibility for the fact the client had got several thousand pounds in fines and penalties um, obviously the client um, is now sort of launching a legal challenge against the accountant how that will go I don't know um, but you know you have to realize as the client that um, sometimes if the accountant is your registered office and things do go wrong which they often do the accountant may not take responsibility for and the last point is HMRC and Companies House won't see it as the accountant's responsibility, they'll see it as your responsibility. The director of the company in HMRC's eyes is responsible for getting the accounts and uh, tax returns filed. And uh, again, like in my, my client's case, the four to five, six thousand pounds in fines is payable by her. Um, and they're not really interested in the fact that the accountant uh, you know didn't, didn't do their job you can't really use that as an excuse you know she did say well can I appeal these penalties and say my accountant didn't do things correctly well you can do but I don't think HMRC will take a lot of notice of it to be honest it is your responsibility as a director of a limited company to get these uh, accounts and tax returns filed so uh, I just think these five reasons together um, act as a good uh, a good case for not using your accountant as your registered office. I really think you need to retain some control as director of your limited company. You need to be aware when the deadlines are uh, for accounts to be filed, for tax to be paid, for corporation tax returns to be delivered. And if you have a registered office service, 40, 50, 60 pound a year, that's not your accountant, then you they will make sure that you get uh, you get notified of any HMRC or company's house correspondence. And of course, you can, you know, it doesn't matter if you change accountants. You know, I know lots of people that change accountants quite a lot. So uh, if you do change accountants frequently, uh, which you probably shouldn't do, but some do, and if you do, then having your accountant as your registered office is going to cause a serious amount of problems because you just don't know where correspondence is going to go. You know, HMRC are notoriously slow in updating their records. So I just think you have one address um, that you always use, doesn't matter which accountant you have, you just have that one address, that one service you use online for £50 a year. And uh, it doesn't matter what your accountant's address is or where your accountant is or if your accountant's going to pick it up or not or let you know, you're in control of it. And that's what I think is, is really important. So I hope I haven't offended too many accountants. Don't forget, I'm an accountant myself. And when I started, I did offer a registered office service, but I've seen things go disastrously wrong and I've seen it cost, client, cost clients thousands and thousands of pounds. So I now never, ever recommend it. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave a comment below if you have. Please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, um, feel free to contact me, there's a link in the, uh, in the description, uh, I say I'm Jason Blackman, my practice is just pure, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again soon.